Good morning, YouTubers and fellow steam enthusiasts. Today we're going to uh, bring Crystal out of her hibernation. So first of all, we'll roll forward, get into our uh, at-home steaming location. Out of gear and uh, brakes are off. Let's roll it forward. My friend's using the wheel much easier. And she'll start rolling. If you've got a showman, try not to push her on the, the roof, as uh, you'll knacker the uh, roof supports. Take her so she's just past the garage. Not about her. Bear gloves on. So the people that don't know what she is, she's a one-third scale replica of a Burrow Showman Road locomotive. She runs at 180 pounds per square inch and she's actually built from a kit from Steam Traction World. So all the plugs are back in. There's uh, plugs down on the foundation ring front and rear. There's a plug up the front of the smoke box. Injector valve is setting open. So, to open her up, take the off, and the roof lifts up. I put the back one on, it's not windy, so I can secure the back one and then we'll do the front one. So, just to stop it getting knocked off, the wonders of the Velcro just locks her on. Front bar's a wee bit tighter because of where it's shaped. That gets plugged in. And to lock the front on, chimney goes back in so it's it's locked there so this bar can't come out neither. So the mechanical water pump, its valve is open because the line is in line with the pipework, so it hasn't been changed. Mechanical lubricator still has some. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And the level has gone down, so that is pumping. I have a couple of torches for the uh, the man stand, so we can see the gauge glass, etc. So this is all in the drain down open position, so that can be closed. That one can be cycled, that one can be cycled as well. Check the injector valve, opens and closes. Make sure the uh, is the uh, pressure gauge valve is open. It seems a wee bit tight, so get a wee help along. Ease it off, that's better. Right, it's just off maximum, so that works fine. Put that back, and then the fire grate's in, there's nothing on the fire grate. I'll open the damper. Hook that up to its hook, and then we'll be ready to steam up, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Right, so now, before we can boil water in the boiler, we need to put water in. So she actually holds about uh, 10 gallons in the boiler, 
and about the same again in the uh, tanks and she was winterised so she was emptied of water completely so that uh, there's no risk of frost damage during the winter so some people take one of the drain plugs out or the uh, plug in the front of the smoke box there's a much easier way of doing this piece of pipe hose lock and the squeezy nozzle of a, bot, of a tube of um, silicon seal so we'll go in the pipe just like that and then that goes up in here and it slides onto the blow down valve blow down valve open I'm already to boot water in but before we do that we need to boot water treatment in because the boiler is empty so we'll get the bucket of steam supplies so we drop left in here from last year not a huge amount, so we'll have to fill that up in a minute. But uh, what I do to get the initial treatment in, and because it's uh, a refresh from start, we boot quite a heavy dose straight in to the end of the hose. Yeah. Get the fitting. Squeegee it on. Just like that. That should be okay. to do just to catch the chemical dribbles while it's initially going in as we do have a dog so we'll just catch that so to get water into the boiler we need to open orifices to allow it to escape regular open injector valve open gauge glass open and we'll start injecting water. So we've got three quarters of the for. Turn the water off. And I'll shut. We've got a splash upside the boiler, that's all right. And the spanner. Or the market rounder. And we'll just get down onto there. Get the valve a wee nip. A wee nip and a tuck. And that goes away. And it's whole. Right, so this can come off now. Otherwise, when you get a lot of uh, melting plastic, get the hose off the end, this goes away, and then we'll get the belly tank and tender filled up with water. Right, gauge glass. Very important. Shows you the level of water in the boiler. No water, no steam, no go. Major problem, you could go bang. Because you're fire crown is uncooled metal starts heating up metal starts melting metal gets very soft so to test the last we're not in steam we're in cold conditions so 
first of all, drop the gauge, confirming we have water pouring out the bottom. So we'll do that. There we go, we have water coming out the bottom. Back to the glass, and the level has dropped. Close the valve, it returns. Close the bottom valve. For mine, I've got them set for horizontal as closed. Open the bottom valve, the drain. The glass now empties and stays empty. Close the valve, the glass stays empty. Open the bottom nut the valve, the glass fills up and we can do the, the top. It's not a great deal we can do with the top at the moment because there's no steam to eject it. We're closing the top, opening the drain, the level doesn't change so basically it's holding that column of water. So we'll leave the two open, confirm, dip in level as we open the valve. When you're steaming, your water level will rise as you're starting to heat the water up because the washer is expanding, but there's no pressure to go against that expansion. So the water will come up and then might even go above the top of the glass and then it will start coming down again and you think, oh, I'm losing water. No, you haven't used any steam but you're now compressing your water and that gives you your correct water level in the gauge. On the Steam Traction World Road Local and Showman engine, if I'm sitting just perking, uh, gently perking at a rally field, I'll sit about between half and three quarter of glass. If I'm on the road, depending on the terrain, that can be anything from half glass to just under full glass depending if you're going uphill, down the hill, or what you're expecting. Um, the bigger the model, the more volume of material you have, the less quick things go wrong. And one thing you always remember, if it all goes horribly wrong and you're somewhere safe, drop the fire out, there's no more heat input, and nothing else can happen to the engine. So, don't panic. There's no need to panic. 